A very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. This is a slightly pre-recorded video today, so uh, a couple of little um, things may be slightly out, so uh, just kind of bear with me on that one. But I wanted to start off today's uh, European Outlook by looking at Hurricane Francine made a landfall um, on the Louisiana coast. It appears that it made landfalls at a 100 mile per hour Category 2 972 millibar hurricane as it moved on shore, which is um, quite surprising, actually, if I'm being honest, given the fact that it was um, essentially uh, very significantly interacting with land. It also was in um, within a, a very, very sheared environment, a very strong west to southwesterly uh, flow within the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. It really was pushing a lot of the convection off to the to the northeast, causing it to, to kind of become lopsided. But then also with uh, dry air getting drawn in from Texas, it all had the hallmarks of a weakening system, but uh, it looks as if the system came ashore uh, near Homa um, and Morgan City, Louisiana, as a Cat 2 100 mile per hour hurricane. Thought I would start off by showing you that. There is a lot of things going on at the moment here. Where do I start? Let's talk about rainfall and the potential of... Uh, don't want to over, overdo this, but a potentially catastrophic rain event um, may be about to unfold across parts of Eastern Europe. We've got, obviously, Arctic air driving south over the western side of Europe. You can see here in the um, in this upper air 850 anomaly chart here, the very, very cold air getting drawn in on the back side of this low. We've got some very warm air getting wafted northwards here. We've got a very strong area of high pressure over far western um, Asia, far eastern Europe, and that's acting as a wheel here to draw exceptionally warmer northwards the problem that we have is this arctic air is going to continue to drive southeastwards over europe and we're going to see an area of low pressure develop now these are the current sea surface temperature anomalies over the central mediterranean we're still talking between 26 and 28 celsius water temperatures these are the water temperatures around italy and these are the water temperatures around Greece. Uh, so very, very uh, significant fuel within the Med Basin. But when you're driving some very, very cold and usually colder by mid-September standards southeastwards, you have the recipe for a uh, system developing. But remember what we've seen back at the end of last week, end of the weekend. Cut off area of low pressure developing over Biscay bringing some very heavy rainfall across parts of northern Iberia, France, and into the southern UK. What essentially we're going to see, it looks like, if we look at the, the GFS, mean sea level pressure, and anomaly here, this is how the pattern looks to be evolving going forward. So we have this area of high pressure sliding in uh, by the time we reach Friday. Now, let's go back, in fact and see how this unfolds. So there's that 979 millibar area of low pressure that is uh, ha has drawn down that Arctic air. We've got low heights. Uh, remember, this is mean sea level pressure. But then as we go into the middle portions of yesterday, this, uh, this is around 18Z, Wednesday, yesterday, we've got a, a feature that develops over northern Italy. It just kind of develops, if you notice here, and then as we continue to play through the loop, remember that we've got Arctic air getting drawn south. And this area of low pressure is going to develop here along the periphery of where the two air masses meet. Hot, humid air versus a cold, dry Arctic air. And this feature will develop. But watch what happens as we move through the weekend and then the next week. We've got an area of high pressure that really starts to build over the north of Europe here. And we've got a large envelope of low pressure that is trapped beneath this area of strengthening high pressure, both in the upper levels as well as the low levels of the atmosphere. 
And what may happen is this feature may become locked in place underneath this ridge of high pressure. And if you look at the rainfall totals, keeping in mind the warmth over the Mediterranean that is going to get drawn out of the water into the atmosphere, increasing the moisture levels, but then get drawn into this developing system. Play through this loop and watch what happens with these rainfall totals. This is total accumulated precipitation of the ECMWF model. And look at this here developing from northern Italy through parts of Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, up into Czech Republic, Slovakia, in the southern portions of, of uh, Poland. We have got significant amounts of rain expected to fall. And as much as nearly 500 millimetres of rain is seen by the ECMWF between now and Saturday next weekend, the 21st of September here, and this could be a major problem. Now, keep in mind, I want to just show you this chart here. This is quite interesting to see off uh, my website here. Um, just bear with me a little second here. Is the drought situation. Um, two seconds, I should have had this pulled up, and I didn't, um, which is annoying. But uh, let's play through this article here, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. The drought situation. So bear in mind that the, the, the drought over Eastern Europe has been increasing in strength all the way through the summer season. June, July, August, all record uh, warm months and very, very uh, worse than drought situation in this very area. You drop that amount of rainfall over the drought stricken areas and you have a major problem. The ground baked hard. This heavy rainfall essentially just bounces off the surface and then you cause flash flooding. As a consequence, the ground cannot absorb the water the same way coming off a summer of drought. So this could be a potentially devastating flood situation unfolding uh, as we move through the weekend and, and early next week across this region of Europe. I wanted to show you what is going on as well. Now, I showed you the upper, and uh, in fact, this is the mean sea level pressure anomaly as we uh, go towards the middle and second half of next week. You notice here the trough actually slides back westward once again, which is quite interesting. I want to show you something here. This pattern here is very, very phase 6 MJO. And if we look at the MJO chart, you can see that that is exactly what we have is a amplified phase six of the Madden Julian oscillation. Now, one thing I want to point out to you is this. So this correlates to blocking over the uh, over the UK and Europe here. So phase six, Madden Julian oscillation, blocking high pressure over the UK and Europe here. Now, what will be interesting to watch for is if the MGO can rotate into phases 7 and 8, possibly even into 1. You notice here that uh, the block and high becomes more focused over the North Atlantic, Greenland. And in the wintertime, this would certainly produce uh, a cold spell. We have got uh, the North Atlantic Oscillation going deeper into negative territory. But the MGO is also expected to go uh, continue it pr propagating eastwards over the Pacific and into the Atlantic Basin and coinciding with the NAO and the AO, the Arctic Oscillation, going into uh, firmly negative territory. You can see that here very clearly that it's going uh, quite strongly into negative territory, looking at the North Atlantic Oscillation. So what is the Arctic Oscillation? It, essentially, when it's positive, it means we've got strong winds circling the, uh, the the Arctic, the polar vortex. The stronger those winds, the stronger the polar vortex, the stronger the westerly flow will be. Milder conditions dominate in Europe and uh, across North America. The, once it goes into negative territory, which we are seeing uh, as we progress through the next week to 10 days, you are slowing down the westerlies and you have a greater chance of seeing Arctic air getting displaced out of the Arctic and into the middle attitude pattern. And if the MJO can rotate into phases 7, 8, and 1, then that increases the chance of seeing blocking 
uh, and a potential cold spell down the road. Now, bear in mind we're still in the early autumn, but if we uh, zoom out and go to the northern hemispheric view, there is reasons to believe that the pattern that we have seen and currently have could return as we move into, uh, say, the latter half of September into the early portions of October. Look at this here off the GFS ensemble. This is mean sea level pressure, and look at how the heights are strengthening to the north and to the northwest of the UK. Um, that is a, a classic negative AO and negative NAO signal. I want to end this video by showing you this here, folks. This is the 10 millibar temperature profile here over the North Pole. And the blues represent the uh, building of cold over the pole. There's the polar vortex right there, developing, strengthening. But as we move towards the end of the loop here, this is getting into the second half of September. Look at the warmth that's now starting to show up over Siberia. And it's beginning to already put pressure on the polar vortex. This is a highly unusual situation to see this early on in the autumn season. Remember that the polar vortex is only really in its development stage, but already we're seeing a weakening of strat warming pushing the, the vortex off its off its uh, axis and towards um, the, the you know the northern portions of North America, Greenland and Northern Europe here. Essentially what this is telling me is that we are going to potentially see a very weak polar vortex through September and through October. That would suggest to me with the La Nina, West QBO and all our factors, including the Manjulian Oscillation, we have a chance of seeing what just took place this week returning, maybe once, maybe twice, during this autumn, never mind even the winter, but even during this autumn, we have an opportunity to see this pattern repeat itself. Let's have a look at the upper air chart here of the GFS ensemble real quick just to see what it's showing here. This is day one through five. And you can see here positive the west of the UK extend up into Greenland, North America. Day six through ten. You can see here the positive over northern Europe. There's your phase six MJO right there. Strong positive to the north of the UK uh, and Europe. And also across uh, Hudson Bay, Eastern Canada, we need to watch out for the tropics with this, with the trough diving down the western side of North America, for example. And then the 11 to 15 day, you can see here that the high pressure is starting to kind of build further north and further northwest uh, of the UK and Ireland here. This would suggest to me that there is a potential, very small chance at the moment. This is just a hunch, not a forecast. I'm not hyping things up but we could see another surge of cold coming down. Given the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation going firmly in the negative territory, the weakness in the polar vortex and the rotation through phases 7, 8 and 1 of the MJO. Plenty of reason to stick around here in the channel, so please do so. Hit that like button, share with your friends and family and subscribe if you have not already done so. Lots of exciting times to come and I hope you can join me and stick around for the latest Bye for now.